So hello everyone. Yeah, I'm Mao Song, and I'm the hack lead for the real-time computing team. And today I will talk about Twitter Heron and Aurora. Aurora. This is the talk outline. First, we will give an uh, overview kind of what is real-time computing and why we need that. And then we have some motivation about why we move from earlier previous computing platform to new computing platform Heron using an existing powerful schedulers resource manager, says Aurora. And then we're talking about Heron on Aurora and our operational experience. Finally, we will have some conclusion and Q&A. First, why we need real-time computing? Because Twitter is real-time. We have real-time chains, real-time conversation, real-time search, and a lot of real-time events. And we have to analyze billions of events in real time, which is a challenge. Earlier, previous, we have built a Twitter storm, kind of, it is a streaming platform to analyze real time data as they arrive, so we can react to the data as they happen. What it provides, it has guaranteed mesh processing, so no data loss. It has horizontal, uh, horizontal scalability, so when the traffic increases, we can also handle those big traffic. We have very robust fault tolerance, so we can handle any failure cases. Also, it has very concise code design. People just need to focus on what they want, the core logic, and no need to handle kind of some very hot logic, hot machine failure cases. So yeah, or when you know there are some emanations, yeah. This is some architecture of storm, ring architecture. So we will have two, ki two types of nodes. Node is host kind of master node and slave node. Master node running the Nimbus kind of is something to monitoring the whole class normal running, including restarting some any failure nodes, failure supervisors also is responsible for assigning tasks to executions. Then we have slave node which run the supervisor and the real work task we call worker. Supervisor is responsible to restart any failed kind of worker and other monitoring cases. This is basic ring attachers. So when we have a big real-time computing jobs, we will people will specify what every component, where every step does. And then they specify what's the parisons for that task. That means how many head of the bigger parison it is, the more traffic data you can handle. Then Storm kind of will break them into different small JVM process kind of tasks and put those tasks into worker, some JVM processes. Then we can process data parallelically. That's how we do the streaming computing in real time to handle huge amount of traffic as they arrive. This worked pretty good for a long time, kind of, but later we found some issues. As I mentioned here, first, Nimbus is a single process. At the time, see, uh, let, I need to mention that the storm we mentioned here is some old version two or three years ago. Maybe the latest open source version is a little different from this one. So at that time, the Nimbus it has no authorization. What it means? So people will submit topology, some job. We are the same role. We have opened a specific service role and people who want to use a storm need to participate in that role. There are two issues. First, anyone can manage any topologies. You can kill some production topology if you want. It's really bad, yes? And secondly, because no authorization, every job run in the same role. When an on-call issue came, who should be responsible for that? At that time, our team kind of need to take care of that because don't call issue with direct to the storm team and our real time computing team. Then we have to be maybe paged and wake up at night. And because we are, we are some platform running some other logics, we have nothing to do with those issues. We have to wake up people who really own those topologies. It's very playful. Secondly, there are no resource restoration isolations. 
at that time. We have to rely on the host isolation to provide the uh, uh, resource isolation. What does it mean? That means if you want guaranteed resources, you need to specify how many hosts you want. You could not say I just want, okay, three CPU or 10 gigabyte RAM for this job, for this container. No. You have to specify, okay, this whole job, you need 10 hosts cut off and then can provide the guaranteed resources. It costs great loss. Also, it is not scalable cut off. It is a single process. Responsible for a lot of jobs, for example, scheduling, for example, monitoring, restarting the old uh, dead jobs, and also cut off some UI and some matches reporting. Besides the master node, let's have a look at slave node. It is some particular hosts. So, as you see, we need dedicated cluster for that, for some specific setup. Also, we need some SRE to handle their clusters issues, for example, network outage. For example, we may want to remove some host from the cluster or may want to put some host into cluster. Also, kind of huge maintenance in involved it because we maintain this, we own this cluster, we own those hosts, th those servers. These examples for at that time, we have a storm cluster, a cluster, we own that, we separate them into shared pool and isolated pool. Shared pool was to run some dev, uh, devil jobs. We have no resource guarantee for those jobs, and we have isolated pool which run their production jobs. So you can request, for example, Joe's topology, you request six hosts. Then all those six hosts belong to you. Nobody else can touch it to guarantee their resources. Then we try to think, could we do better? Do we have better way to solve this kind of? And then we consider maybe we can have some new real-time computing platform. Why Heron? For example, at that time we want to have some more performance predictability, and we want ease of management. We want to improve developer productivity. And here I may focus on the second point, and uh, yeah. And this is some design decision we did. First, in order to leverage the migration cost, we keep the API fully compatible with Storm. So people will just need to change their build file, no need to change any lines of source code. Then they can migrate their Storm job to the Heron jobs. And secondly, that's one very big design decision, is to use some in multi-talent environment. That's Aurora. We can leverage existing scheduler and the out-of-box features. We can reduce maintenance, and I will mention what exactly that means in later. Also, we can want to provide task isolations. Then every task can have guaranteed resources. Then it will be easy for debug, for resource isolation, and so forth, any providing. So here it is talk, I want to focus on the second point. Use existing scheduler and those out-of-box features. Just remember earlier, we faced all of these issues. And yes, we can build these features from scratch, but this is non -tri trivial work, yes? Then in Twitter, currently we are doing this. The new design, we will submit our job. The Heron will be treated as a more library. We have a lot of adapter for different resource managers, say here, Aurora. We will submit a job via Aurora for different job topologies. Then, what's the benefit of using that? First, Aurora provides very good resource quota. So people, when they're requesting some resource for their jobs, they no need to ask our team. They can just go to Aurora, they have some standard workflow to request, okay, how many capacity you want for this job, what's the quota, then it's also easy for earlier, as the, they mentioned, the charge back. They can very easy to chase how many resources you take, then charge back. Secondly, authorization. Currently, due to Aurora providing these awesome features, people will know, uh, can submit their job based on their own role. 
then people will not be able to kill other people's job, manage them. Also, when an on-call issues happen, we can direct those issues to the correct owner of that job. Third, a roll-up provides very expressive DSL. As uh, earlier Gary mentioned, you just need to write an Aurora config file, and that's all. Then you can use Aurora. It's a very expressive, very powerful. You can specify the resource you, uh, you want. You can specify some constraint cutoff. And also, Aurora, is very, uh, it has high availability and scalability, as has been proven to maintain the Twitter service. It has thousands of no cutoff, more than that cutoff. Also, Aurora provides, as they saw, this, they saw, inbuilt metrics. Then we can enjoy this monitoring metrics and debug information from free. They build it. We can know whether, OK, this host is OK or not, how many people are using that kind of, what's their CPU usage from free. And all those features are very helpful for some computing platform kind of, heron kind of. And if we using that, we can enjoy all of them from free. So currently, this is a heron job topology on Aurora, what it looks like. We will, according to your specification and the logic, pack them in different small containers. Uh, as you see, every container has some instance, this I1, I2, S3, F4, and some demo process, for example, stream manager or matrix manager, and they are all bundled. So we, requ we request uh, no setup, we don't request any setup on those Aurora hosts. Then we Given that we have different containers, we can submit those jobs via the Aurora config very easily and run them on Aurora. It's very simple. So this is currently how Heron on Aurora looks like head off. Uh, we are running all of our jobs on, side, on top of Aurora head off, thousands of, hundreds of jobs. And also we build a lot of service on top of, of Heron, for example, Heron with to monitoring the metrics. Heron Checker, which provides a RESTful API to query all the, uh, to query the status or metrics for the whole cluster or anything you want. And Heron Web kind of UI, which provides your graphic UI to chase your topology or jobs. All of them are running on Aurora. This is uh, some sample topology from simple to complex. All of them are running on RAW, very good. So this is some conclusion here on uh, Twitter, kind of running on RAW. We have three most benefits after using this existing scheduler or, or and the, the out of box features. First, we can reduce the cost and memory, reduce the resources. Why? Currently, we are using multi-tenant and shared clusters. And Aurora provides very kind of fine granular resource requirements. So no need to isolate host for a particular job. Secondly, we can reduce the maintenance, uh, maintenance cost in two aspects. First, the cluster aspects. We no need to maintain servers. Earlier, our team has SRE, but now we have no SRE because Aurora will take care of the maintenance of the servers, take, out, take the machines, network outages, put more machines, debug with bad host. They will take care of that. Also, we reduce the core operation cost for topologies. Currently, when an on-call issues come, they will direct, those issues will direct to the owners of the topology because they will better understand what's the wrong with those topologies, those jobs. And only when they confirm it may be some heroin issues, then they can pin us again. So it can reduce the maintenance cost dramatically, honestly. So Aurora is good, but yeah, we still want some more features from Aurora if possible. First, currently Aurora, the, uh, uh, for different containers inside a job, it supports only homogeneous containers. We want maybe support for heterogeneous containers because some computing jobs, the container may be different in nature. 
it can help us to reduce some of your source uh, requirements. And second, we want maybe in place contain update. I mean, when we send an update to some jobs, currently we need to return all the resources to Aurora, and then we re uh, request the request of the resource from Aurora, which could be slow if the job is very big. If we support in place update, we can reuse the resources and run with new dependencies. That would be awesome. And third, we hope maybe we can have some HPP comes kind of some restful API to schedule jobs, to make scheduling the job easier. So if curious to learn more about Heron, this awesome paper and all these people named kind of other team members or early team members, we want to thanks to who make very a lot of contributions to Heron. So thank you. Any questions? You, okay, so the question is kind of what, what are those topologies for, yes? So it is some topology, I mean, due to some confidential issues, I could not say exactly what it is. They are from some simple counting to some very complex, maybe machine learning algorithms. Because you know we have some embed something on top of Heron, they can convert some DSL kind of uh, uh, de declare languages of to some Heron jobs, so they can come up with some very complex storm top uh, Heron topologies for some machine learning kind of or counting jobs. Right. Any more questions? Uh, the question is when to open source this. So we are working on it. Yeah, still, yeah. We don't have a exact ETA on this. Yeah, we are working on this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>